back to the channel guys. So today what we're going to do is discuss my training program. So I've got a bit of a visual aid here with my with my training plan, an outline of my training plan written up. So basically we've got, what I do is I run three separate training cycles at the same time or simultaneously. So we've got three different lower body sessions, three different push sessions, and three different pull sessions. So we'll go through why I do it this way. Um, we'll go through training split. We'll go through when I make changes to certain exercises, how I program in general, uh, and when I make progressions and how I judge when to make those progressions. So starting off, why I program this way. Why my program is set up with three different training cycles. So first and foremost, variety. So I like to have a lot of different exercises in my plan. Basically just keep training fresh. I like having a lot of variety in my training. Um, not just so that it doesn't get too stale. I like having something interesting to look forward to each week. Uh, something that I also program is I like to get at least one heavy lift into each session. So something that in the past I've done like your shoulders and arm sessions and they're really hard. I, I used to find them really hard to get myself motivated to do because there was nothing that sort of scared me to scared me before I was going into train so on like a lower body day where I'm squatting or a upper body day where I'm doing a heavy bench press or a back day where I'm deadlifting there was nothing like that on a shoulder and arm day that got me excited to train so I like to include one thing in every workout that that gets me excited to get into the gym and that that's also why I why I, pro, why I train the way that I train, which is with progressive overload, which we'll get into later into later on into the video as well. Uh, so yeah, number one, variety. We've got three different workouts for each, each uh, muscle group, I guess. Um, so that's first and foremost why I program that way. Second reason and probably the more important reason is to get enough spacing between certain workouts so that I don't aggravate any injuries. So I don't think I've discussed it on the channel yet, but previously I've had stress fractures in my lower back. So I've got to be really careful with the way that I train and still do a lot of things, but the I've got to be careful the way I structure training so that I don't aggravate any of those, so that I don't aggravate my lower back. So basically the main thing is where deadlifts are in a workout or in the weekly split and the workouts preceding those those sessions. So I make sure, so I've got deadlifts in lower body session two, pull session two and pull session three. Uh, three different variations, I've got RDLs on legs B, uh, conventional deadlifts on pull B and sumo deadlifts on pull C. So we've got, a, a, they're all fairly close together but in the grand scheme of things there's a good amount of space in there. So before I go into that I'll just touch on my training split so what I do is three days on one day off two days on one day off so that being Tuesday Wednesday Thursday on Friday off Saturday Sunday on Monday off that may change just depending on my schedule uh, being Monday or Tuesday they may switch uh, so back to the training back to the training um, so We'll start at lower body B. So we've got RDLs and hack squats on 
on that day. So that's a, that's fairly heavy spinal loading on that on that session. So following up from that, we've got a push day which has very minimal spinal loading. Um, and then I like yearly I've got a rest day in there following that, following either following on from legs or following on from push, so that by the time I, I deadlift it'll be two to three days since I've since I've done my last load of deadlifts. So by the time I've got to conventionals, my lower back's rested, recovered and ready to hit ready to hit those. Uh, generally I'll still have a little bit of hamstring soreness but my lower back's not overly fatigued by the time I get to those conventionals. So on that day I've got a lot of unsupported movements. So I've got heavy one arm rows, I've got heavy cable rows, um, and obviously conventional deadlifts. Following on from that, lower body C is non-spinal loading, so belt squats and a sissy squat variation are included on those days, and then there's no spinal loading with any of my hamstring movements either, which following on from a deadlift session, hamstrings are generally pretty fatigued anyway, so there's not a lot of hamstrings in that day. Um, and then from there, by the time we get to the next pool day, that'll generally be three to four days between that lot of deadlifts and the sumo deadlifts. So I have sumo deadlifts in because one, I can lift really heavy on it and it's basically an out, really heavy output workout, workout for me. Um, I can sit in good posture with it and there's very minimal risk on my lower back, whereas the conventionals puts my back in a little bit of a compromised state. Um, while sumos aren't really considered a great muscle building exercise as such, I've had I've been doing them for basically my whole lifting career and I think I've developed a pretty decent back so I like to keep those in and the fact that I can lift close to 300 kilos with them um, there's obviously a lot of muscle recruitment being, in, being involved there so that's why I keep them in my program again that's another pretty heavy spinal loading day so we've got one arm rows, we've got three uh, unsupported uh, barbell rows there, and also the sumo deadlifts. Uh, so then following on from that workout, we come back to session number one for legs, which is basically a non-spinal loading day as well. So the main two, the heavy main movements in that session are pendulums and banded leg press. So very minimal spinal loading there very heavy quad work. Um, the sumo deadlift's quite a quad dominant movement, quite a quad dominant deadlift. Um, it doesn't normally take away too much from this lower body session. So that that's another thing I like to take into account when I'm programming, that there's not a lot of that carrier crossover training between um, muscle groups. So that's also why I keep legs and pull separate to each other but then there's always going to be that be that carryover from week like cycle to cycle where I go from A to B um, but yeah I, I think I've taken it into account pretty well um, not not having that overlap there pretty much covers everything for why my program set out that way so we'll move into when I make changes to certain exercises. So basically what I do with my programming is I have a base structure of what I want to work out to look like. So I have on my first leg session, I've got hamstring deductors. I get two quad move, three quad movements a single leg variation and a glute exercise and then I have abs, I can just plug and play whatever sort of exercises I feel work for that day. So I'll keep those same exercises in throughout probably a, probably a six week block.
think there may be a number number of different reasons that I'll that I'll change change of exercise out. But normally it'll be more so it's not feel not I don't get don't get the feel of the exercise or I'm not making progress and I'll I'll sub an exercise out. But it's more so based off the structure of the workout rather than exercise included in the session itself. And then obviously, as I've discussed, there's not going to be that carryover between session and session that's causing fatigue leading into that next session. So with my push days, while they don't really carry over to any of the other things, I do have a little bit of rear delt and a bit of bicep on, on every push day as well. So I have rear delts in push, basically just to set my posture. It's just in there as a, as a warm up exercise. So it's just to set the posture, make sure my shoulders are in proper alignment and I'm not putting too much unnecessary stress on my shoulders. Um, and then I have biceps in on push days as well because I have them identified as a weak point that I want to work on this improvement season. So I include them on both push and pull days throughout the whole program. And that's pretty much how, uh, when I make change to exercises, um, it may it, it may also be as simple as I can't get onto a into onto a machine in a certain workout, so I'll just sub it out for a, a like an exercise that is similar to it. So for a, for a fly variation, push session A is an incline variation. So any sort of incline fly, I do a do a plate loaded machine fly there. Uh, Push session B is a flat, flatter variation of a fly. So I started off with cable flies and then I've moved into doing a pec deck now because I wasn't getting as much, I wasn't making progress and I wasn't feeling the, feeling the cable fly as much as I had, had been earlier on in the program. That pull session, I've still got to do a lot of work on to refine, just to make sure that there isn't that carryover fatigue from that from pull A into legs B. Um, it's just an ongoing process there. Um, always trying to refine refine my programming to make sure that I'm getting the most out of it, but not losing ground in other workouts. Uh, so that's everything for changes in programming so with progression all my pro all my training is based off progressive overloads so I try to make progress whether that be um, adding an extra rep adding two and a half to five kilos per session um, or even just making my execution better session to session as well so the rate of progression is going to be different from exercise to exercise as well. So um, some things I can make bigger jumps on. The, some things I'll take a five kilo jump each week. Other things might be a 10 kilo jump. Obviously just depends on how easily I'm getting certain rep ranges. So yeah, every exercise has its, has its own rep range that I, that I aim for. And then, depending on how nicely I hit, a, hit hit that rep range, will be whether I take take a rep progression, or I may even just stick the same same weight and just make sure that I execute the reps better the following week. Yeah, just to make sure that the the form on every exercise is to to my standard that I'm holding myself to. So that's something that I've taken a lot more seriously this off season is rep execution um, range of motion being being vital for me to make sure I get uh, maximal muscle recruitment uh, something that I was getting pretty slack on throughout last off season even into prep I was cutting reps way too short for pressing I was probably stopping a good one to two inches off my chest. The weights were going up, but the, the uh, execution was just shit out. So 
yeah, pull, pull loading right back and just focusing on the execution and yeah, just make sure I get maximum muscle recruitment out of every exercise, get the most out of every rep I can. Um, not overdoing volume too much, so most exercises are just one to two sets. Uh, the occasional thing will have three sets, but very minimal exercise in that sort of volume range. Uh, anything that's in that three to four set range is basically there as, um, as warm-up exercise to get a bit of blood flow into, into a muscle group before I start, start a session. Um, and then the bulk of the workout is one to two sets and just going all out to as close to failure as I can, whether that be technical failure or actual actual muscular failure. Uh, if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you like the video, subscribe to my channel, um, turn, the post turn the post notifications on and tell a friend. Share the video, comment on the video, anything you want to see on the channel in the future, drop that below, and I'll see you guys in the next one. This is music.